let us pray. Precious Father, glorious Lord, eternal God, everlasting King, we thank you for bringing us together. We thank you for your plan and purpose for our lives. We thank you for the power of your word, the sufficiency of your grace. We thank you for your abiding presence. Lord, as we have come to hear you speak, speak to our very hearts. And let your word do us good, even as we are being prepared for the coming of the Lord in Jesus' name. Thank you for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, we are going to be looking at the word of God. You have been hearing about the case of Balaam and the case of Balak and the people of Israel. And uh, you know that Balaam, by the instruction and the direction of Balak, had attempted to put a curse upon the children of Israel. But if God be for you, who can be against you? There is no one that can be against you. And that will make me to tell you that you don't need to be afraid of witches and wizards. You don't need to be afraid of the forces and the powers of darkness. You don't need to be afraid of principalities and powers. All you need to do is just to live a life that is well, pleasing, and acceptable unto God. Because the angels of the Lord encamp around about them that loves the Lord, that fears the Lord, and that are serving the Lord. So, you are not alone. God is there with you. And God will keep you true to the very end in Jesus' name. And you know, when Balaam tried and tried and tried, eventually, God spoke. The same mouth he was going to use to cause, blessing began to proceed out of that mouth. And look at it in the book of Numbers, chapter 23, and look at it from verse 21. He had not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither had he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and in the name and there. And the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt, the Egypt of sin, the Egypt of darkness, the Egypt of transgression, the Egypt of iniquity, the Egypt of failure. God brought them out of Egypt. He had, as it were, the strength of a, a, a unicorn. Surely, somebody says surely. Somebody shout surely. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what hath God wrought? Verse 24, Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion, a better one, and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey. And drink the blood of the slain. The Lord will give you victory Amen. over your enemy, Amen. over sin, Amen. over sickness, Amen. over Satan, Amen. and all the powers of darkness in Jesus' name. Amen. And that is the reason why you and I, you know, last Sunday you listened to the message on perfect work with God. We need to ensure that on a daily basis, our lives are right with God. On daily basis, we do that which is well pleasing unto God. On daily basis, we want to remain in the center of the will of the Lord. And that's why today, we are considering the subject of victory over the works of the flesh. Victory over the works of the flesh. Understand that as mortal men, we are prone to sinning. Except the grace of God, the power of God, and the Spirit of God helps us to live a life that is holy and acceptable unto God. Every human being will be tempted to sin. And it doesn't matter your age, it doesn't matter your sex, it doesn't matter your class or your category in life. The temptation will come, 
But the grace to overcome, the Lord will give unto you in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Understand again, victory over the works of the flesh. Matthew 11, verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Uh, you will possess heaven by force. You will possess a victory by force. In the name of Jesus. And so, come back now to Numbers chapter 25, verses 1 to 3. Numbers 25, 1 to 3. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit hurdle with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did it and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Beerpoor. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Israel joined himself unto bear Paul, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them. Please look up here. Many a times, the enemy without will want to throw an arrow, throw a missile, attack in different and diverse ways. But because you are standing in the Lord, standing in the faith, you are standing by grace, you are standing in holiness and righteousness. They will try and all their effort will be in vain. They will labor and they will labor in vain. And for as long as you remain in Christ, remain in the Lord, remain in the center of the will of God, no weapon that is formed or fashioned against you will prosper in Jesus' name. You know, the Bible say that if I regard the iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Now, the major tool that the devil uses against a believer is to get that believer to sin against God. Then, the door of affliction will open. The door of, of, of infirmity will open. The door of oppression will open. The door of sickness and infirmity will open. And then the enemy will come in and take over and take control. I pray today in any way or form that the door has been opened for the enemy into your life. I pray first the Lord will cast out the enemy. And that door will be shut up against them completely in Jesus' name. Chapter 23. Balaam was going to cost them. It was impossible. And the Bible said, there is, surely, he says there, there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. There was nothing against them that could happen because the Lord himself is their shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And he was there with them. The Lord was their shield. The Lord was their buckler. The Lord was their guide. The Lord was their power. And now, Israel felt, we have been under protection all this while. All has been going on where we us. There is no sickness, there is no infirmity. Everything we need, the Lord has supplied. They relax. They let down their guard. And then now, get him to shoot him. As they abode there, in carelessness, in presumptuous sin, they began to get closer unequal yoke. They began to relate with the people of the land and then immorality came in. Pay attention here. Not just in Israel. In the armies and the soldiers of the world, it has been known that when you try to conquer a city and you cannot conquer that city, you want to send in girls. You want to send in ladies secretly and then to go in and mingle with the soldiers of the people. Once they can get in, you can be sure the battle is won already. And so the enemy, through the counsel of Balaam, the counsel of Balaam, now ladies came into the camp of Israel and then the people carelessly, the people not 
uh, be on their guard, began to mess up, uh, and then got into prostitution. And then they got into all kinds of immoral perversion, and then the enemy came. The Bible said concerning Ephraim, Ephraim has mingled himself with the people. Ephraim is now like a cake on bake, and the enemy will pursue him. I pray the enemy will not pursue you in Jesus' name. So Israel went into sin. And the anger of the Lord, what the devil couldn't do, what Balaam couldn't do, what Balak couldn't do, what, the, what Egypt couldn't do, now they opened the door for God himself to come and do it for them. I pray the anger of the Lord will not come against you in Jesus' name. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, looking at it from verse 1. Moreover, brethren, brethren are people that are saved by grace. People, brethren are people that are washed by the blood of Jesus. Brethren are people that are on their way to heaven. Brethren are people that are free from sin, inward sin, outward sin. Brethren are people that are united together in love, the love of God. Moreover, brethren, I would know that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was who? Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, these things were our examples to the intent we should not trust, uh, we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now, verse 11. Now, all these things happened unto them. For example, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the earth are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh his standard take it, lest he fall. You will not fall. The flesh is the fallen nature of man. The flesh is the way and the pleasure of sin. It is in constant battle with the spirit man in us. And only the same people can take side with the spirit. Because the things of the flesh are easier to come by, easier to obey, easier to enjoy. But when you are walking in the spirit, when you are filled with the spirit of the Lord, you then will know that you are in a battlefield and that you have to war, to fight. Understand again, from the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and only the violent will take it by force. Understand them, the Christian life that we live is not going to be a success on the bed of roses. It's not going to be just an easy walk, an easy journey. No, it's going to be true in narrow path, a narrow way. Not this broad way of religion that many people are going through. And the Bible say in the book of Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8, And there shall be an highway and a way. It shall be called the way of holiness. No unclean thing will pass through it. So understand is a very high way of holiness. And I pray God will keep you through it in Jesus' name. When you meet with sinners and the unregenerate people, they are easily overwhelmed and overcome by sin and the demands of the flesh to do whatever the body wants them to do. But for you, you will prevail. For you, you will succeed. I look at three points. Number one, unavoidable conflict against the works of the flesh. Unavoidable conflict. 
You said, uh, well, I'm born again. And because I'm born again, I will never be tempted. That is not going to happen. You will be tempted. Jesus was tempted. The apostles were tempted. The prophets of old were tempted. Everyone will be tempted for as long as we're in this tabernacle. Nobody ever go to school without being tested. It is after the trial, after the test, after the temptation, we get promoted. Somebody here will be promoted. In the name of Jesus. Point number two uncountable catalogs of the works of the flesh. We are going to see some of them. There is no way we can mention all of them. By the day, by the day, many more sins are coming up that we never had of in the past. Uncountable catalogs of the works of the flesh. Now the question is, if they are so uncountable, if everybody will go through it, must go through it, shall go through it, does that mean that everybody must fall for it? Does that mean that there is no victory? No, there is victory at the end of the tunnel of your life. Light is coming at the end of the tunnel in Jesus' name. The point number three, undeniable conquest over the works of the flesh. Undeniable is something that will be real, something that will be visible, somebody, something that will be testifiable that God will do for you, do for me, and for all of us in Jesus' name. Come back to point one, unavoidable conflict against the works of the flesh unavoidable conflict. The conflict will be there. Offenses will come. Things will happen. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. First Corinthians 10 13. They have no temptation taking you. But such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But will, will the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it? So we see from there that temptation is common to every man. But the grace to overcome is also there for the saints in Jesus' name. Galatians chapter 5, looking at it from verse 16 through to 18. This I say then. This is the apostle speaking. Walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth up against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. You cannot do the things that you would. You can't just say, I feel like drinking alcohol, and then you go and do it. No, you cannot do that. You cannot just say, I feel like sleeping with a lady, and then you just go sleeping here and there. You cannot do that. You got into a situation, and something is telling you, tell a lie. So you, you, so you can get out of the trouble, and the spirit is saying, yeah, go ahead and tell a lie. And be free. But then, there is another spirit in you, telling you, you are a child of God. I say you are a child of God, and that you cannot do that. And then the other spirit that is smarting pressure, the spirit of the devil, is telling you this other person did it and came out of it. He told a lie. The other one did it and told a lie. If you tell the truth right now, you will be in trouble and all eyes on you, and you'll be ashamed of yourself. And then you say to yourself, others may, somebody help me. I cannot. Others may lie. Others may deceive. Others may mislead. Others may try to manipulate. Others may get into fornication and uh, adultery. Others may do all kinds of immorality. Others may dress anyhow they want. Others may, I cannot. I am different. I am called to stand out, not to blend in. And you say to yourself, I will stand tall. And somebody here will stand tall. In the name of Jesus. That is why Matthew chapter 26, verse 41 says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. The spirit wants to make it to heaven. The spirit wants to do the will of God. The spirit wants to follow the paths of the Lord, but the flesh is weak. Romans chapter 7, verse 21. Romans 7, 21. I find then a law that when I would do good, 
evil is present with me. For I delight in the Lord of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. I'm bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my member. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this dead? Here we see Paul the Apostle telling and unveiling to us the situation of the carnal man, the situation of the unregenerate person, that yes, the desire to do well is there, but the grace is lacking. And you must have heard of my testimony many years back that I knew the right thing to do, the right thing to say, but the challenges were always there. The flesh was always ruling. And there were times I said, I won't tell lies again. And before I knew it, I had told the lie. And then I would slap my mouth and say, you this mouth. It's not about the mouth. It's about the spirit within. I pray every spirit that is contrary to that of God will be cast out of you in Jesus' name. And then came one day. I met with the Lord. It was very easy. Somebody only preached. Just about 30 minutes. And I sat down there as if I have never heard the Bible preached before. And there was a connection between the Spirit of God and my spirit. And then I was penitent. I was contrite at heart. I went on my knees. And I asked the Lord to forgive me my sin. And that very day, he forgave me. He made me a new creature. And ever since, he has kept me. He will keep you. I said he will keep you. And what I thought was impossible became possible. Became possible. Became possible. You know, if you have never been through something, you think, oh, it's impossible. You see all these uh, gymnastic people, the way they do some things. You see some people, they, they, they will run, and then they will jump up, and they will flip. You try to flip. Now I want to be here in, in few minutes. And then someone will say, you can flip. You say, me? Nobody can ever flip because you have not been there. And I am telling you, if you don't know what holiness is about, it's because you have not been there. But it is real. After I had tried and tried and tried and failed many times, I thought it was impossible until God did it for me. That same God is still alive. And he's still doing it for people. He's the one that said, be ye holy for I, thy God, I am holy. You can have victory over the flesh. You said this pornography. Uh, uh, before I know it, I'm there. Before I know it, I'm there. And the Lord is saying, you can be free. If only you desire to be free. And he will deliver you in Jesus' name. I said he will deliver you in Jesus' name. God is the mighty God. The glorious God. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Dearly beloved, talking to, about, talking to soul, safe souls. Dearly beloved, I beseech you, as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly laws which war against the soul, which fight against the soul. Abstain from them. And that simply means uh, you want to stay away from every appearances of evil. Your friends, your companions, the things you do, the places you go, are there places, are there people, are there things that will help you to be a better Christian or hinder you from being your best for the Lord, in the Lord, to the Lord? And so, that's why Apostle Peter is saying, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, you are a stranger, you are a pilgrim, you don't belong here. You are only passing through. And you will pass through successfully in Jesus' name. As you continue in this journey of life, I pray in the name of the Lord, you will finish well. By the power of God, you will finish strong. You will not fall by the wayside in Jesus' name. The enemy will not rejoice over you. Dearly beloved, I beseech you, I plead with you, I charge you, I encourage you as strangers and pilgrims. You don't talk like them. You are not part of them. You don't behave like them, the people of the world, the unregenerate, unsaved, unconverted, unwashed. You are not like them. 
You don't react like them. You are not like them. You don't dress like them. You are not like them. You don't do the kind of job, the way they do it, they, you are not like them. You don't falsify information or figure or certificate, you are not like them. You don't get somebody's social security to use because uh, you are a foreigner, you are not like them. Any lie, whether spoken or acted, will be accounted for on the day of judgment. Dearly beloved, I beseech you, I plead with you, as strangers and pilgrims. Pilgrims don't stay in one place. They know they are on a journey. Abstain from fleshly loss, which war against the soul. Against the soul. There is a constant battle between the spirit and the flesh. It takes spiritual vitality and skill to win in this battle. And somebody here will win. To be a winner, you must take side with God and take the following steps. Number one, you must be sure you have been led by the Spirit of God on a daily basis. Galatians 5, 17 again. For the flesh lost against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would but if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. So be led of the Spirit. Number two, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Don't take anything for granted. Don't say because I am born again, everything is okay. The enemy of your soul is after you. He wants to get you back to Egypt. He wants to get you back to your old life. He wants to disconnect you from God. Watch and pray. Number three, be sure that there is no, uh, let me get the word, deliberation with the flesh. When the temptation comes, there is no maybe or not maybe. No, 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 no. There is nothing to discuss with the flesh. All you need to do is to mortify this, the flesh. All you need to do is to crucify the flesh. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. You want to be sure that on daily basis, you don't even meander in the pool, uh, 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 around the enemy in any way or form. First Peter chapter 2, verse 11 again. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain. That's the next thing you do. Abstain, abstain. Number one, be led by the Spirit. Number two, watch and pray. Number three, no deliberation with the devil, with the flesh, with the enemy. Number four, abstain from fleshly laws. Number five, banish the works of the flesh. How do you banish? You contend. From Jude chapter one, verse three, it says, contend earnestly, honestly, passionately, vigorously, sincerely, wholeheartedly, earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Unto the saints. And when you contend like that, you will be able to banish the devil, banish the things of the flesh, banish the suggestions of the devil. And then number six, you determine determination. Nobody ever win a battle without determination. Nobody will ever win in the athletic uh, sports of the world without determination. Nobody ever win in a race without determination. Nobody ever win in soccer without determination. Nobody ever pass examination without determination. If you are going to be a successful Christian in this time and age, especially with all the promiscuity and the iniquity and the transgression that, that has pervaded the whole world, if you must live a successful Christian life, you must be determined. People will make fun of you. They make jest of you. You must be determined. You will look like you are a nobody to them. You must be determined. And the enemy will strike you from the left and the, and the right. You are determined. And then you say to yourself, for me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If death should come in the course of this, to God be the glory. 
sudden death, sudden glory. And if it is the will of God for me to still live, to fulfill more of the purpose of which I have been called, let the name of the Lord be glorified. But as for me, I will maintain my own integrity before him. You want to make sure that you stand out among the business people. You stand out among your, your, your schoolmates in the schools. You stand out. Among the people in your family, you stand out. Even within the church, you stand out. Not everybody in the church is born again. Not everybody in the church is serious. Not everybody in the church is contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. You want to be an example. You want to be a burning and a shining light. Let your light so shine before men that they may see and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So we come and say, it is a show all. Well, at least you could see. You could see something. Whether show up or not, I will not partake in this rebellion. Show up or not, I am not going to be part of this transgression. Call the spade a spade. You had a Phineas this morning when he saw iniquity in the camp. The plague was already there. The people were already dying. A lot of evil were already taking place. And this son of the devil, still cold, ignored the plane of thousands and millions of people that have lost their family member. Ignore the will of God and the groaning in the spirit of the Lord and could still go get a strange woman and parade her and parade her. Thank God with the people with the anger of the Holy Ghost. The man was mad. He grabbed the jab the lane. He went through to the tent of the man. And then he slew him and slew the lady. And when God saw that, God says, yes. Good job. That is my real son. And the judgment stage. May the Lord count on you. Determination. Determination. And finally, finally, you know many a times when it is time for us to pray, we, we go into, into, uh, into Corinthians, uh, the weapons of our warfare are not kind of but mighty through God. And then we go into Ephesians, uh, we war not against flesh and blood. But pay attention, if you read those things, what are the kind of weapons God is telling us to use, to employ? You will see holiness there. You see righteousness there. You see faith there. You will see uh, you will see evangelism there. And so, when you really, really want to make it to heaven, this is one thing one thing you should do, and that is what I do: preach the true word to other people. Preach the sound doctrine to other people. And then you discover, the more you are preaching the sound doctrine to other people, the more it is becoming difficult for you to live a double standard life. I need an amen. The more you are telling the people and showing them the way, the more you follow the way yourself. Because you know that if you should do otherwise, the whole world will turn against you. But because you are real, and as a pastor, you are not just concerned about getting crowds. If it's about crowd, we know what to do. But it's not about crowd. It's about preparing souls for heaven. And if it is one or two that came, praise the Lord. And you remember, Jesus, your Lord and my Lord, your Savior and my Savior, when he stood ministering, the crowd came. What were they coming for? They were not coming for the true word. They were not coming for the salvation he was giving. They were not coming for, to be prepared for heaven. They were coming because of the miracle, because of the signs and wonders. But then, when Jesus uses signs and wonders to draw them, if you listen to one of the messages during the last crusade, you were told signs points the way. Signs and wonders. I was blind, my eyes got open. That is not the end result. It is to point people to God. I need an amen. I was paralyzed and then I got healed. It is to connect people with God. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. And then when all those happen, Jesus then begins to preach to them. I 
And then they got to a point, they felt his sermon was too hard, too tall. Like some would say, we are preaching fire and brimstone. Jesus did more than that. When they felt it was too hard, the people began to, to leave, to leave, to leave. In their thousands, they left. And Jesus looked around. Only 12 disciples remain. The real people will stand with you, no matter what is happening. And to be double sure, are these ones real? Or they are just faking it? And Jesus looked at them and said, will you also go away? He didn't say, well, please, you all have mercy on me. You have been with me. You see now everybody has gone. And uh, if you go to, not Jesus, he started alone. He knew he was going to go alone by himself. He turned to them and said, will you also go away? There are times that people will threaten us in the church. Uh, if you do this, we will leave your church. If you don't want the truth, you can leave the church. Because in reality, it's not my church. It is his church. I said it is his church. I am only a messenger who will give account for the way I deliver the message. If I do it because of the fear of man, I will get punished. But if I do it according to the will of God, I will get rewarded. And the opposition here, the tribulation here, it's only for a short period of time. When I'm dead, everything is gone. But the judgment of God is all through eternity. And that is why we must preach the word in season and out of season. Because the goal here is to prepare you for the long, long eternity. So that after your journey here on earth, you will rejoice all through eternity. And somebody here will rejoice. So you evangelize. Preach the gospel anywhere you go, everywhere you go. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14 says, Stand therefore, having your loins got about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I get to the second point uncountable catalogs of the works of the flesh. Uncountable catalogs of the works of the flesh. That's to tell you. There are so many of them. Romans chapter 1, verse 28, through to 32. Romans chapter 1, from verse 28. It says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Reprobate mind, sinning mind, degenerate mind, no good mind. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, you see there, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, with that natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. The Lord is saying that it's not just that you are doing it alone, but you encourage people doing it, you support people doing it, you motivate people doing it, you don't kick against those that are doing it. The same judgment coming upon them will come upon you also. In Jesus' name. I you didn't hear that? Amen. If I have put it in the blessing form, you will say a big amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Pay attention. If we stand with God, God will stand with us. If we depart from God, let him abandon us. You don't want to say amen. You want to abandon him and you want him to still be with you. I said if we abandon God, let God abandon us. Amen. I know it's not easy. But when you remember 
that he will abandon you and the enemy will take over, then you will stay with him. You will not take him for granted. You will not take his word for granted. You will not take his spirit for granted. You will not take his warning for granted. Praise the Lord. I know many places they should they should have quoted for us. Amen. Let me tell you the way the Bible puts it. The Bible says, the soul that she in it. It's, that's the Bible. That's the Bible. You, you cannot sugarcoat it. The just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. That's the Bible. Now it shall come to pass. If you would diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and do according to all that is commanded in this book, then will all these blessings come upon you and overtake you, and blessed shall that be when thou comest in. And blessed shall that be when thou goest out. But if you will not hearken to the voice of the Lord, and do according to all the commandments that are written herein. Then will all these causes come upon you. And the exact of the blessing, the exact opposite of the blessing begins to be pronounced. Go and read your Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Amen? I know many of you like to read verses 1 to 13 and then you stop. Go beyond verse 13. You will see that the causes in that book are actually more than the blessings. Amen? Amen? So when we're talking about the works of the flesh, we're talking about adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, and uh, it also includes worldly music, worldly dance, dressing uh, in a provo uh, provocative dressing. And uh, for those of you that are students, it includes examination malpractices. And for those of you at your places of work, it includes uh, workplace malpractices, whatever the malpractice may be. Uh, don't just say, well, that is the corporate culture. No, it's going to be the corporate hell at the end of the day. And then pornography is also another part of it. I told you earlier on, disobedience to parents, rebellion to authorities, and so on and so forth, uh, as light and darkness cannot be together, as oil and water cannot be together, as day and night cannot be together, so God and iniquity cannot be together. So we must be born again. We must live a holy and righteous life. I get to the third point, undeniable conquest over the work of the flesh. Come back again to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. I look at it from verse 16. These I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But, verse 18, if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. And in an amen. Amen. How do we prevail? Succeed, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have been crucified. I have crucified the flesh with the affections and loss. Verse 25, if we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another and being one another. Chapter 2 of Galatians, chapter verse 20. I mentioned it before, but now let me read it clearly. Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, 
who loved me and gave himself for me. We can live above sin. We can live above the works of the flesh. Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. When you get to a point whereby you consider yourself dead to the world and the world is dead unto you, then you are free. Nothing will move you anymore. People will do things against you. It will not bother you much. Amen. Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1. Colossians, I wait for you till you get there. Because I needed to underline your Bible and mark some things there. Colossians chapter 3. I look at it from verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, if you then are born again, if you then have been washed clean by the blood of Jesus, if you then have the spirit of the Lord in you, the spirit of the Holy God living through you, if you then are free from sin and transgression and iniquity, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection, your desire, your interest, your passion, Set your affection on things above and not on the things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear, appear with him in glory and in the name. Amen. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. So then we see, it's not enough for us to read about the children of Israel. Let us bring the message, the word, inward to ourselves. How is my life? Am I still standing in the faith? Am I really, really righteous or am I just religious? As a student, how am I when I'm in the college, in the campus, in the school, with my peers? How am I? How is my life? When I'm with the opposite sex, how am I? As a, an adult, you go to work. Your wife is not there. Your husband is not there. How is your life? What are the things you say? What are the things you do? How do you relate with people of the opposite sex? You are in the church and you're in a department with other people. How is your life? Is your sectional area of work helping you to be a slave and servant of sin or you are free from sin and from iniquity the lord is talking to you are you a worker in the church or maybe you're a pastor and you think nobody can talk to me there is one in heaven who can talk to you the soul that sin it is shall die whatsoever we do in the flesh will give account when we get to the other side of it knowing this that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin anymore. You will be free in Jesus' name. So then, born again Christians, whether as children, youth, young adults, adults, should never take the works of the flesh lightly. Should never take it for granted. We all must not be passive about it. We must wake up to the fact that we cannot, we must not, we should not allow or tolerate sin or iniquity in our life. We should ensure that on a daily basis we crucify the flesh. We connect with God. We live in his presence on a daily basis. Every time, every day you go on your knee before the Lord, you want to go with a clear heart, a pure heart, holy heart. And then you watch and you pray daily. And using the light of the word of God as the compass of your life. You don't do anything without the world. You don't eat anything without the world. And you don't follow the multitude to commit sin. And if there is anything in your life that the enemy has used or has been using to hold you bound thus far, today you can be free. Let us pray.